Investigators say Russian athletes and government officials took part in a state-sponsored doping operation that touched nearly every Olympic sport. For more on that, we're joined by Andrew Brandt. He's the director of the Morad Center for Sports Law at Villanova University. Andrew, good morning. Good morning. How do you think the International Olympic Committee handled this? You know, I think there's a punting here. They took all this information about, a, as it was said, a state-sponsored program that was systematic, that was pervasive, comprehensive. And what they did is they sent it back to the Federation, said, you decide. Mm -hmm. So all this evidence that it was coming from the top, these doping regimens, which were extensive, where, where, where athletes were calling the testers to say, hey, can I schedule my test? Like a hair appointment, yeah. like a dentist appointment. <laughs> And all they did was send it back to the federations, let them decide, rather than doing what the IOC is supposed to do, the buck should have stopped there. It's interesting, between this and the World Cup, you get a sense of how big these events are for corruption. Why are they such magnets? Oh, because there's just so much money involved. And you look at what happened in Sochi in 2014, and they're very involved here with the Russian doping system. $51 billion spent by Russia to host those games. But there is, like FIFA you mentioned, this sort of pervasive conflicts that go on where you have Reedy, Sir Craig Reedy is president of World Anti-Doping and vice president of IOC. So these inherent conflicts, this stain of kind of conspiracy corruption just sort of clouds the whole system. You use the word stain. I mean, is there a stain on the Olympics? Have the Olympics actually been affected by this in terms of interest? Yeah, I think people are going to focus on how fast Michael Phelps swims yeah, and exactly. Usain Bolt runs. That's the sports or what drives everyone. But over this, this state-sponsored program where we say 118 banned from the Olympics for Russian athletes, my question is, only 118? Yeah. 270 or so are going to compete with this evidence behind them. And there's all this talk about they delayed, 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 so we get to this point now where it's too late to ban everyone. And you have these relationships with Putin and with the IOC president, Thomas Bach. It's just all, like FIFA you mentioned, just this constant pervasive conflicted mess. I think people are left, though, begging, like asking, is it possible to have clean games? Is that something we'll ever see? You know, I think with athletes, they're always looking for an edge. And my worry is that the cheaters are always ahead of the testers. But maybe if you do something overseeing everything, punish the governments, punish the sanctioning bodies that aren't doing their job. If you do it from the top, then these athletes don't have as much incentive to perform like that. Also, there are some scientific advancements biological passports. There's the hope where it's not testing for a certain drug, but it's kind of physiological changes over time. That's our hope for clean games. All right, Andrew Brandt, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Anthony.